At the time that I was diagnosed, I had actually gone through my very first boudoir photo shoot. And it's very kind of serendipitous looking back now because I have these images of my body pre-cancer. And I see this woman that was expecting a life that was gonna unfold that is very different than the one that unfolded. Before cancer, I had a very healthy sex life with my husband. And then during treatment, there was definitely a withdrawal and a lessening of that. I think the most difficult aspect was the sexual side effects and the sexual kind of ramifications of my treatment in the years to follow. It ranges everything from a lack of libido, a lack of desire for any kind of intimacy, all the way up to painful intercourse, um, vaginal dryness and hot flashes, everything that kind of you would normally associate with menopause, except in a very young woman. I broached the topic with my oncologist when we started to see that it was getting more and more painful and it was truly having an impact on our ability to have sex or to be intimate on a regular basis. It was one of those doorknob questions with the doctor where we finished up everything else and they were leaving the room and I awkwardly at the very end say, oh, by the way, is there anything that can be done because I'm having difficulty with intercourse? And then it was in the coming weeks and months in being referred to a gynecological specialist, along with talking to other young women and older women in the community that had gone through similar impacts from their treatment of saying, oh yeah, there's options. One of those is the use of dilators. And this was something that was given to me by the gynecological doctor when I went in speaking about pain. And so from my Understanding from this doctor and learning more about the impact of hormone blocking medications on the vaginal areas that skin um, and muscle tissue can thin in that area, causing a lot of pain. And so there were various contraptions, like one strange bendy thing that I would use to, to stretch. And it was literally something that I was supposed to do every night for five minutes and the dilator use. Um, and it really did help. The other thing that has been extremely helpful for me in the past year or so is using a injectable moisturizer that's in a suppository form. And I put that in about five minutes before any kind of intimacy. And I have actually, for the first time since breast cancer, had sex that was not painful. And so for me, that is such a huge turning point. I think my views on sex before I had breast cancer were much more of a carefree, spontaneous expectation. It was the concept that in order to really truly have this great sexual intimacy, it has to be spur of the moment and it has to be enjoyable for everybody. And I think my mindset after cancer has shifted more to Sex is just one form of being intimate with your partner, and it's something that has to be prioritized and worked on. And I think for me, taking off the table this expectation that it has to be spontaneous or it has to be the spur of the moment thing, or it has to be amazing every time has really kind of relieved some of that stress. So I think as I've maybe matured and as I've changed since treatment, I just approach it through a new lens. It's a part of our relationship, but it's not the sole part of our relationship. And it also goes hand in hand with how are we caring for each other in other romantic ways and how are we bonding and how are we finding time to talk and communicate and feel safe and trusted with each other and understanding that all of those parts and pieces fit together in your intimate relationship and you really can't have one without the other. And so I think it's much more of a complex relationship for me now when it comes to my views on sex and intimacy, but it's definitely one that has much more of a deeper core versus before it maybe being more of a surface level understanding.